Thanks for joining us on this edition of National Focus. I'm Kimani St. Jean. Coming up, work will begin on the Roseau and Portsmouth Enhancement Project early next year. The first Creole in the streets has been launched and DFC announces another change in the World Creole Music Festival lineup. Stay tuned for details of these and other interesting stories after this. A lot of bathtubs are blamed for bruises. Some staircases are accused of being responsible for broken bones. Doors are occasionally viewed suspiciously as causing lesions. A high percentage of tables are accused of producing bleeding or trauma. Violence against women is a crime and it's everyone's responsibility. It's inexcusable. If you're a victim or witness of physical or psychological violence or abuse, seek help and denounce the perpetrator. Thanks for staying with us. The city of Roseau and the town of Portsmouth are another step closer to a complete facelift with the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the government of Dominica and the company selected to undertake the project. As soon as the first quarter of next year, the first phase of the Roseau and Portsmouth enhancement project will get on the way. That phase will follow a four-month traffic study and will involve a number of upgrade and enhancement sub-projects to include the road network, bridges, drainage, street lighting, landscaping, and in Portsmouth, an administrative building. With the announcement of such welcome news, the patience of the general public is being sought as a critical factor. We will expect that during the construction phase, uh, of the project, in particular the Rosa project, that there will be certainly a level of inconvenience. That is expected. Um, no matter how phased and structured that the, the work will be undertaken, but certainly people will be affected. And therefore, as usual, uh, we'll be calling on the, the residents, we'll be calling on the business people and the commuters within that section of the city uh, to exercise patience and uh, to collaborate uh, with the, the contractors and the people involved uh, during the implementation phase of the project. And uh, I'm sure that um, if we are all concerned about the, the present state of the city and our efforts at improving on the, the conditions there, that we would expect the full collaboration of all the stakeholders uh, in that respect. The Honorable Minister for Public Works, Raymond Blackmore, reported on the state of the island's road network at that event, citing that in 2009, 25% of the island's main roads were in fair condition, while now in 2014, 65% is in excellent working condition. The complete overhaul of the city of Roseau and the town of Portsmouth will no doubt boost those figures even more, bringing Dominica closer to the goal of 100% by 2020. Honorable Blackmore said further that the rationale behind this project at this time is indisputable. We can look at certain facts and come to rational conclusions. And all of us will admit that the roads in Roseau are all tired. All of us will admit and agree that our drains are inadequate in the city of Roseau. All of us will admit and agree that we have tired sidewalks in Roseau. And all of us will admit that our current road stock in Roseau cannot adequately accommodate the increase of vehicular traffic. The time, therefore, is now for us to do something about it. Steve Hobson is chairman of NSG Management and Technical Services Limited, the company which will execute that project. He says his main concerns are preserving the nature in the nature aisle and minimizing the inconveniences to stakeholders when the project gets underway. I asked the members of the public to be sympathetic. Yes, there'll be times, I'm sure, when my name will be cursed. 
uh, when you're sitting in that traffic jam and you can't get to school on time or you've missed that meeting. We are not coming here in any arrogant fashion. We've come here to listen, to talk, to talk to stakeholders, to members of the public, try to understand what it is that you would like to see. We obviously can deal with some of the simple infrastructure. That's technically, it's a case of problems that can be solved. But what we don't want to do is leave this project and feel that we could have done better, uh, that we could have done more to enhance these beautiful towns. Uh, so we are going to be working very closely with the mayor, with the ministry, with all the stakeholders, the taxi association, the tourist board, but most especially with the people who live and have to work in these Roseau and Portsmouth. The proposal for the Roseau Master Plan was first presented to stakeholders on May 13th this year. Another Creole activity has been added to the already colorful and diverse independence calendar. The first ever Creole in the Streets event was launched on Wednesday on Great Marlboro Street. A brainchild of the National Development Foundation of Dominica, the activity takes on an exposition style format with several objectives, mainly to bring attention to the businesses of clients of the NDFD. The NDFD sees each client as the center of its business. We do not exist as just a sole entity in isolation or who operates in a vacuum. Hence, the reason why we have you here this morning. Every stakeholder from the NDFD point of view is critical in terms of the development of the small and micro sector that we are operating in. The clients and the persons who are here demonstrating this morning and having their products available for display and, let me add, for sale, you are critical and please do not underestimate the role that you play in the whole development of our overall economy. The event was also addressed by Oliver Henderson, the board's chairman, and Ricky Brumant, the agriculture director. Brumant described the NDFD's role as the cornerstone of grassroots industries. Karin Prevo, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Employment and Trade and Industry, also addressed the event's official launch. I'm very happy that the NDFD has taken this on and I think that this is an excellent opportunity to get these business people who have these very creative and very innovative business ideas that we have in Dominica to be right in the middle of Rosa where the action is and during the independent season. I think this is an excellent idea and this is why the Ministry of Trade is here to support today. About 60 booths were set up on Great Marlboro Street, showcasing businesses of every sector from agriculture to services to manufacturing to distributive trade and food. In other news, the Ministry of Education and the United Nations Children Fund, UNICEF and other stakeholders involved in early childhood education met at the Fortune Hotel on Wednesday for feedback and evaluation of the implementation of high school preschool curriculum in Dominica. The high school preschool curriculum is a developmentally appropriate program introduced by the UNICEF to be used in early childhood education. Vida George, Assistant Education Officer, in her presentation at the workshop opening ceremony, provided an overview of high school. Curriculums are expected to be developmentally appropriate. Developmentally appropriate includes being age appropriate, individually appropriate, socially and culturally appropriate. For children in the preschool years, a curriculum that is developmentally appropriate is one that includes all these, but also affords them the opportunity to construct knowledge in an active way and assist them in developing the skills of being independent learners. The hallmark of the high school preschool curriculum is active participatory learning. HighScope proposes that there are five main ingredients that must be present if children are to be active learners. They believe that children must have materials and they must be given an opportunity to manipulate these materials. 
Children must also have choice in selecting materials and using the materials to be creative. Of course, as they manipulate the materials, we, the adults, must support children as we observe keenly to understand their thought processes and learn their language. She added that preschoolers are supposed to create, invent, and explore, not copy. They are supposed to learn constructively with manipulatives and not be given book lists. She also advised that early learners should be given plain paper to form their own letters and numbers. This, George explained, is the objective of high school program. The program contains key developmental indicators in the approach to learning. It allows children to express themselves as adults observe and nurture their interests. A survey conducted in 2007 revealed that a majority of preschools on the island did not use curriculums. In 2008, UNICEF collaborated with the Ministry of Education and four schools were selected to pilot the program. Between 2010 and 2013, 20 new preschools were added to the list and the program will be introduced in at least eight new schools for the new school year. In May, consultants were on the island to conduct an evaluation of the implementation of the program. Dr. Tristy Nichols, team leader of Manitou Incorporated, explained some of their findings. Our findings are that for the four model schools that have been in place, there is full implementation of the high scope preschool curriculum program, which is great news. Um, our main findings also include um, that teachers are well adapted and children are also very, very well adapted to the program. One of the challenges that we found was that there is limited outdoor space, which um, prevents the children from exercising their little arms and legs. Uh, and another challenge we found was that some parents have some difficulty paying or paying on time, the school fees required. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Masala Powell, pledged the continued support of the Ministry in Early Childhood Development in Dominica. On the heels of signing 11 local contractors to complete work on the Penville to Vickers Road just last week, government is already thinking ahead for further development of the area. Honorable Parliamentary Representative for the Constituency and Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt outlined some future plans for the Penville community in the area of road infrastructure. The plan for next year is to, is to replace the double surface dressing with concrete because we get a lot of rain in this area. The terrain is, is, is difficult. And um, the concrete sections have, have, have held up very nicely, and we believe that might be better suited for an area with high rainfall. Um, you know, uh, so we will move towards um, in the new year uh, replacing the double surface dressing. The Vehicles MP also announced that a groundbreaking ceremony will take place on the 30th of this month for a resource center in Lower Penville. Honorable Skerritt said as the MP for that constituency, he is pleased with the developments taking place in that area. I have said publicly a, a personal, um, special affinity to Penville um, for a number of reasons. Um, uh, one, of it, one of them being the fact that for I felt Penville was was left behind for too for too long by previous governments, and, and I think we need to give the people of Penville better representation and a, and, a, and a share of the of the pie, as small as it may be. And as we've seen over the years, Penville has opened up, so to speak, um, especially with the construction of the GD Penville Road. The Honorable Acting Prime Minister commended the work of the Girodel and Eggleston villagers in the construction of their roads. At the 16th inaugural meeting of the Girodel Eggleston Village Council, the Honorable Acting Prime Minister recommended that other villages model the work of ethic of the residents of Girodel and Eggleston. Natural skill amongst the people of Eggleston and Girodel. 
The guys who work are from Eggleston and Jordan. So it's natural talent at work. And when you look at the, the quality of the work, the finish, and I, I don't know how you all want to name that section of the road, if it's a highway or whatever it is, but certainly the, the end product, what, what we got from the contractors is, is, is a, a manifestation of, of highly skilled workers that we have um, in Eglison and Jordan to, to, to result in that, that, that kind of work and that quality of work which they have put down uh, on the Girodel back road. And um, I believe that that road is going to serve for a number of years because of the, I think it's about six inches of rigid concrete right throughout the length of the road. And that in itself is, is a manifestation of the quality and the fact that it's going to last um, for many years. He, however, advises that these roads need to be maintained in the best possible way to lengthen their lifespan. Especially in, in, in Jordan, Eglistan, the our rainfall patterns can be very devastating. You know, a serious show of rain can, can cause serious damage to our roads. And the damage is caused because the drains are not kept free. free. They either stones or debris, a small landslide, you know, in the drains, and then the water comes and flows and digs and then destroy the roads. So we need to pay attention to that as villagers and, and see how best voluntarily, because if we allow the road to, to, to get damaged, then we won't have it to use. But if we do the simple things and, and, and through the council, organize, you know, weekends, a day, a week, or whatever the case may be, I mean, you all guys know how to do it, um, to mobilize the community and, and see how best you can do those, those voluntary tasks. In more news, a stage, a light and sound are set up and ready to carry through the 18th edition of the annual World Creole Music Festival. However, the Dominica Festival's commission has had to cross many hurdles to get to this point. The most recent, a change in the lineup for Sunday night. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen travel issues, Mavado will not be able to make the festival. Their management was only made aware of this recently and since then uh, they have been trying their utmost best to make it possible but unfortunately without success. And so um, upon hearing that news, um, in light of that information, DFC has worked to find an artist uh, from the same genre that we feel will add diversity to the festival while ensuring uh, a great performance from the, the reggae genre. And that artist is none other than Cecile. So Cecile has been, all logistics have been put in place and Cecile will be performing on Sunday night um, at the World Creole Music Festival. Cecile is a female Jamaican reggae dancehall artist. The first serenade band will also be included in the lineup for Sunday night. Notwithstanding recent challenges, Piper says that compared to last year, ticket sales for the festival to date are better. The DFC chairman also informed that last reports from French Ferry Express de Zille indicated that about 1,900 patrons from the neighboring islands of St. Lucia, Martinique, and Guadeloupe are scheduled to arrive arrive on island this weekend but the festival may have just one more hurdle to cross one of the other areas that we are in fact watching obviously is the weather and so um, I've just been in contact specifically with the people at uh, Whitchurch as it relates to the ferry and berthing of the ferry uh, because I understand from the Met Office uh, website that we may be anticipating some sea swells and sea swells would impact the berthing, the location, the, birth, the berthing, the docking of the ferry. This is something that we experienced last year. Uh, many may not know, but the ferry was diverted to Portsmouth, which is the alternate um, um, location. So I've already alerted um, Whitchurch to make sure that there's a plan in place if, for whatever reason, um, that happens. Just recently, the DFC had to exclude Nigerian band Flavor from the festival as a safety measure in light of the recent outbreak of the Ebola virus. Leroy Waddix-Charles 
confident that the World Korea Music Festival is the best show in this part of the hemisphere, has this message for Dominicans for the weekend. We would like the general public, at least for those three days and three nights, let us put aside our differences. Let us put aside our political differences and let us come out and celebrate the greatest cultural integration movement in the en entire Western Hemisphere. The DFC says artists are already on island getting ready for the star party on Thursday night. This year's festival will feature big acts such as Destra, Jacquel, Kerwin Dubois, Tabo Combo and Frankie Vincent. And finally, this news time, the HIV AIDS response unit says its message to the public at this time remains the same throughout the year. Be selfish with your life. Coordinator of the unit, Julie Frampton, says this time of year is as good as any to repeat the call and remind that HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases persist. She says while data for Dominica does not indicate a vast increase, the threat remains real. At the end of 2013, we had 410 cases that is cumulative from 1987 to now. We have confirmed 410 persons. Not hearsay, it's those we have reports of. On an annual basis, we may see 15 new cases, um, 12 new cases, that remains like that. We have not seen a, a vast increase in the number of new cases, which is why you, we need to continue um, sensitizing the, the public um, as to their behaviors. According to Frampton, loss of control is the main reason for new infections at festive times like Carnival and yes, Independence during the festive seasons. And so independence, carnival, those times, um, people um, increase their alcohol consumption. And that is what makes people or puts people at risk, is you have lost all your control, basically. If that's why we want to tell people, um, if you know it's two beers you can have, have two beers and you're still in control. So we always want persons to remain in control. Hence the reason for heightened awareness around those festive seasons. The solution, again, at the peak of Dominica's top festive season, the HIV response unit says, exercise a bit of selfishness. Nobody is responsible for your sexual behavior but you. And that's what the message we always tell people. That is your business. You have to take care of you for you. Basically, be selfish with yourself. Before we leave, take note of these announcements. The Roseau Health District and Ross University invite the general public to a health fair on Saturday, October 25th, 2014, at the gazebo located by the Roseau West Bridge near the Mahu bus stop. The fair begins at 9 a.m. There will be health screenings, blood pressure and blood sugar checks and more. And the general public is informed that due to the staging of the annual Lime Creole in the park from October 27 to 31, 2014 at the Botanic Gardens, the Roseau Health Center will be opened from 8 a.m. to 12 noon daily for that period. All emergencies after 12 noon will be facilitated at the Accident and Emergency Casualty Department at the Princess Margaret Hospital. And that's the English segment of the news. McPherson St. Louis is next with Creole Highlights. Hello tout le monde. Bienvenue dans ce nouvel en Creole. Non moins, c'est McPherson St. Louis. Premièrement, gouvernement Dominique s'y contract pour réhabilitation ville Wozo et Pigmentens. Minister Public Works Honorable Ribbon Blackmore si a ainsi contre gouvernement pendant Steve Hobson si a ainsi contre NSG, Company Consultant Projet là. Première phase pour Ville Wozo qui voit plusieurs aspects. Acting Premier Minister Honorable Ambrose George, représenté Premier Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt pendant ce moment là où la contract là si est jodé. Projet ça qui voit qui voit en, en, en pont neuf. À uh, Westbridge, là, nous avons fait un, un pont neuf pour Kennedy, des de lignes pour le pour, pour trafic. Avec nous, nous travaillons aussi à ce uh, chemin indépendant, à Independence Street. 
à nous que ranger ce chemin, à nous que ranger ces dalles là, à nous que toutes ces 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 lignes là qui portent light, téléphone, c'est bah ça qui abat abat chemin avec um, nous que nous que ouais chemin ce sidewalk là um, um, mais com, comme si yo yo gardia chelma avec um, so so ça c'est comme un smart projet mais grand projet ensemble ni en, en haut des bagages uh, aussi uh, pour exemple nous que ni en, en chemin uh, en chemin neuf à uh, uh, des botanical gardens là pour pour un uh, one day traffic qui uh, a traversé un city uh, pour, 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 pour mener plus plus um, facile pour one to avec quitter um, um, city uh, ça y so, so nous que okay, faire ça aussi mais mais pour mes phases là projet c'est pour on prend neuf Westbridge là avec pour pour ranger Independent Street c'est dalle là c'est c'est sidewalk là avec toutes ces utilities là nous pour mettre ça à bas, à bas, à bas chez moi. En d'autres nouvelles, il y a la place pour vendre pour produits qui sont en la plaine à présent. Parole celle-là, sur le monde de Honorable Peter Saint-Jean. En la plaine, nous avons aussi um, ça nous avons créé un South East Market. Ça, c'est en place au marché. Nous avons bâti un marché neuf. Uh, là, tout le monde, pep, fama, planter, votre grand fond, pour y des délices, ça mène les produits les samedis et pour vendre produits euh, puisque nous avons créé ça nous avons créé standard nous ni pour joindre ces standards en là nous avons délivré service ba ba monde et nous avons dépensé en um, 233000 dollars pour bâtir place ça là une autre nouvelle projet quand pour la coudoué et puis Emzol qui marche bien des gros bâtiments qui bâtissent en chaque ces communauté ça là qui fait 60 appartements qui pour finir par mars l'année prochaine. Selon un parole qui sorti, le projet Salah qui commence bonnet l'année Salah, 65% tout pour finir. Le gouvernement Dominique a fait parole que le projet là qui a bâti au Shanghai Construction au China Group, c'est un travail qui est bien exceptionnel. Le gouvernement a aussi cru que le projet Kai Konsa, c'est une différente manifestation pour Kai en Dominique et puis il a servi comme modèle en PA. Le gouvernement a obtenu 10 millions de dollars loan pour le projet de Le projet qui a bâti en Lacoudoué et puis en Emzol, Kontan. Finalement, on survey national qui conduit au la attention mettez à ces éducation des enfants en Dominique, discuté pendant l'évaluation qui le ministre de l'Éducation Chen Mekwedi. Parole de Salah, sur le officier d'éducation et puis responsabilité éducation des enfants, Vida George. Ministry of Education et UNICEF. C'est yo yo collaboré à implémenter high school preschool curriculum là en Dominique. Yo commencé avec nous commencé avec quatre preschool, Grand Fond, Maho, Sord en Grand B et Model Social Center en Ozo. Nous commencé en 2008 et um, en mois mai année là, nous conduit un assessment on as, pour qui ça nous a fait et bien, où là nous y pour aller. Donc, so, aujourd'hui, là, nous là pour discuter des um, résultats, assessment ça là. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nouvelle en créole pour à présent. Non moins, c'est Macfusson Senos. Au revoir. Coming up next, a tip on social networking. Doasco recognizes that clean water is vital to healthy living. Therefore, it spares no effort in providing a clean, safe, and reliable system. Help keep our rivers safe and clean. Do not cut trees along the river banks and do not pollute with garbage, human or animal feces, and chemicals. Think water, think life. Explain to your children that they should post only information that you and they are comfortable with others seeing. Also remind them that once they post information online, they can't take it back. 
And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News production team, I'm Kimani Seja. Thank you for watching.